Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is Jackie Jensen from Windsor, Ontario, for the repose of the souls of her five brothers. And the second donors are Vincent and Mariah Smith and family from Sarnia, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of Michael Joseph Smith, son and brother. And Vincent and Mariah are here with us today with some of their family. So on behalf of all who will take part in this Mass across Canada, we welcome you and we pray for those for whom this Mass is offered. We begin the week of prayer for Christian unity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you have united many nations in confessing your name. Grant us, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you command, that the people called to your kingdom may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, son of Abiel, son of Zeror, son of Becherath, son of Aphiah, a Benjaminite, a man of wealth. He had a son whose name was Saul, a handsome young man. There is not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. He stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, had strayed. So Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the boys with you. Go and look for the donkeys. He passed through the hill country of Ephraim and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they did not find them. And they passed through the land of Shealim, but they were not there. Then he passed through the land of Benjamin, but they did not find them. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord told him, Here is the man of whom I spoke to you. He it is who shall rule over my people. Then Saul approached Samuel inside the gate and said, Tell me, please, where is the house of the seer? Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up before me to the shrine, for today you shall eat with me. And in the morning I will let you go, and will tell you all that is on your mind. Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him. He said, the Lord has anointed you ruler over his people Israel. You shall reign over the people of the Lord, and you will save them from the hand of their enemies all around. The word of the Lord. King. Lord, your strength gives joy to the King. In 
your strength the king rejoices, O Lord, and in your help how greatly he exalts. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. Lord, your strength is joy to the King, for you meet him with rich blessings. You set a crown of fine gold on his head. He asked you for life, you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. Lord, your strength gives joy to the King. His glory is great through your help. Splendor and majesty you bestow on him. You bestow on him blessings forever. You make him glad with the joy of your presence. Lord, your strength gives joy to the King. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord sent me to bring good news to the poor and freedom to prisoners. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as Jesus sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors? and sinners. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. So, two readings, uh, one of them about choosing a leader, and the other about adding a fifth person to a team of leaders that Jesus had already chosen. And as I hear uh, both readings, I find myself asking the same question. God, are you sure? These are the people you want. The first reading, it's about 
a thousand years before Jesus. And the people had become fed up with their leaders. They wanted a king like the other nations had. So we hear how Saul became the first king of Israel. Saul was born into a a rich family, and he also had the added quality of being a a, a good-looking young man. We're told he stood head and shoulders above everyone else. But the way in which he became king seems very strange. One day, his uh, father sent him to look for the family donkeys. They had got lost. Now, either Saul was not very diligent in looking for the donkeys, or else they had got maybe a good head start on their wanderings. But they were nowhere to be found. And Saul got fed up and wanted to return home. But the young boy with him told him about a man named Samuel, a man of God, a seer, a a leader. And uh, God, we're told, had already told Samuel about this young man, Saul, from the land of Benjamin, just north of Jerusalem. And he had told Samuel, he it is who shall rule my people. So you go out looking for lost donkeys, and you end up being the king of Israel. Very strange. Anyway, the following morning, Samuel, the prophet, the seer, anointed Saul. The Lord has anointed you as ruler. My reaction to this whole story is, I don't believe it. Or maybe I should say, God's ways are not my ways. The people God chooses are not the people I choose. And I even think maybe go back to the whole Christmas story. Uh, A teenager from Nazareth. Her loving but questioning husband. Away down south in Bethlehem, instead of up north in their hometown of Nazareth. A birth in a shed. A birth in a crib. A manger for a bed. And who gets the message about this birth? Shepherds out in the fields and far off magi. God does things in strange ways. God picks strange people. And then we jump a little bit into the second reading from Mark's Gospel. By this time in the readings from Mark, Jesus has begun to pick his team. He has chosen Peter and Andrew, James and John, four fishermen. Two sets of brothers, all of them ordinary men from Capernaum up in the north of Galilee. And today, Jesus adds one more to this team he's putting together. Levi, his fifth draft pick. And Levi, Levi was a a toll collector working for the Romans. As you went from one territory to another, you had to pay a little bit of money to cross from the ruler of one territory into the ruler, to the ruler of another territory. Working for the Romans, of course, meant that everybody around him who were Jews would look down on him, would want to have nothing to do with him. Jesus picks as his number five draft a man commonly classified as a sinner. He calls his first five picks to abandon their trades as fishermen and tax collectors and cast their lot with him. And I sort of stop and say, Jesus, 
Do you know what you're doing? Why are you picking nobodies like them? Why don't you pick somebody important? Somebody who's well-educated? Well, next we see Jesus accepting an invitation to dinner at Levi's house. Sitting down to table with Levi's friends. Tax collectors and sinners, all of them, according to the majority of people. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Are you and I glad that Jesus eats with sinners and not just with 100% good people? Does that include me as among the people that Jesus would want to have a meal with? And his answer is maybe very consoling to us. If they are sinners, if they are not all fully perfect, they need a doctor. So here I am at table with them. In fact, they're the kind of people I want to mix with. That people from every nation and culture, both rich and poor, holy and sinners, may feel at home in our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are alienated from our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who reach out to care for the rejected and the lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord And for all who have written or phoned to ask for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Ever-present God, we thank you that you call us to be Christians, followers of Jesus the Christ. May we learn more about him and walk in his footsteps. Open our churches to all comers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of our faith and one baptism we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all the nations, 
so that in a wondrous manner he might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and fitting and ruling the whole church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the peace of the Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those who believe in you one in mind and heart by the power of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. Our Mass is ended. Our thanks to two donors. The first is Jackie Jensen from Windsor, Ontario. The second are Vincent and Mariah Smythe and family. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend. We'll be looking for you all again. Come Monday. <laughs>